Hello and welcome to episode 123 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I am Helen and I am coming to you from Dundee in Scotland where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur who is eight and Jasper who is five. Always have to think about that. Really, really should be more automatic, shouldn't it? Um, today is the 23rd of September. It is Friday, Friday the 23rd of September. <laughs> and um, as I said, this is episode 123. Um, for anyone that's new, welcome. Um, this is my crafting podcast. I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns, if you are new. Um, and yeah, I basically talk about whatever knitting projects or crafting projects, crochet, whatever I've been working on over the last kind of few weeks in between podcast episodes. Um, so yeah. Welcome back to everyone who watches regularly. As always, it's lovely to have you here. Um, what have I got for you this week? I'm gonna start off with, as always, a quick announcement section. Then I've got a couple of finished objects to share with you. Um, I've got some work in progresses to talk about. I've got, that didn't come out right, works in progress, work in progresses. Nah. Um, <laughs> I've got some new cast-ons to share. I've got a quite a bit of yarny goodness to share actually as well um, and then I'm going to finish off with a bit of a shop news section at the end as well. Um, so yeah, should we just get into it? Have I done all the intro stuff I normally do? Can't really remember. Um, announcements. Um, so just a few things up front. What was I going to say? Um, so first of all, on the last episode in the new location, I had a couple of comments about the reflection in my glasses. Um, unfortunately, that's not really something I can do much about at the moment. Um, what you're actually seeing reflected is my studio light, which is right in front of me. I do have glasses with an anti-reflection coating on them, um, but it's obviously not doing enough. Um, I've tried, I tried, I can't position the light any higher, otherwise it's going to topple over. And um, yeah, I tried to start recording without my glasses on, but I just didn't feel comfortable. Um, not only was I struggling to kind of see what was on the screen in front of me and feeling like the world was a bit blurry, I just, I don't know, I just feel like I'm so used to seeing my face with my glasses on and trust me, they hide like a multitude of sins when it comes to um, under eye bags and everything like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, unfortunately, glare on the glasses is something that you're gonna have to put up with. I will try and keep my head a little bit more down so that I'm not looking up and you're getting the light reflected, but um, yeah, sorry. Um, what else was I gonna say? Make-alongs. We have got the Halloween make-along running currently. Um, so it started on the 1st of September and it's running right up until Halloween itself, right up until the 31st of October. And pretty much any project that you are working on that um, can be some way related to Halloween, horror, um, the supernatural, anything like that is eligible for entry. This make along we allow knitting crochet and also stitching so embroidery or cross stitching um so if you've got any halloween cross stitches on the go and you think you could get them finished by the end of october then by all means enter them as well um there will be prizes as always i've forgotten to bring the prizes down because they're currently hiding up in my wardrobe in my bedroom and i didn't think about it when i sat down to record but i will i will share prizes with you at some point <laughs> um yeah so you can enter in multiple places, as always. Um, you can enter in our Ravelry group. Um, you can enter in our Mighty Network group and you can also enter on Instagram. All of the details and everything like that for the make along are underneath the video in the little sort of drop down box where you can find um, sort of show notes and things like that as well. We also have the Giddy Yarns make along, which is my ongoing make along um, and I draw prizes every quarter. Um, so the next quarterly prize draw will be at the end of September um, and basically any project that you're using that uses at least 50% of Giddy Yarns um, is eligible for entry and I draw two winners each quarter and you basically just get your choice of a skein of yarn from the shop. Um, yeah, so that's that one. Before I get into the big knitting content, um, I know a number of you have um, asked whether I'm going to share the story of my slightly dramatic car breakdown um, earlier in the month. Um, 
and if you followed me on Instagram and various places you will have heard about it I'm sure um, and I will I will share it but I think what I will do is I will leave that right until the end of the podcast so once I finished up the shop news I will um, share all the details of kind of what happened to my poor car on the way back from helping um, Laura Athis Yarns set up for Perth yeah it was a bit dramatic so if you fancy um an exciting dramatic story of car disaster then stick around right till the end of the podcast (laughs) um okay is that everything announcement wise i think it is so let's get in to i've got some finished objects so first finished object i was looking back at my show notes and i don't think this was a finished object on the last podcast Um, If it was, then I apologise because, um, yeah, sorry, but I I don't think it was. It didn't look like I had any finished objects. So I've obviously finished it between podcasts, Um, but I have finished Tom's um, July sock. Um, I'm just, oh, I was just debating whether I had any sock blockers accessible. Most of them are over there, but there is one here. So that's good. Um, I will pop it on a sock blocker, although as always, these sock blockers are designed for my feet and not for Tom's feet, so it will be a little bit small for the sock. Oh, that heel's gone funny. There we go. So here we go. (laughs) I have finished Tom's July sock. Um, If you're new, then um, I create a colour of the month each month for my my shop, um, and each month I've been taking um, a 70 gram sock set from the shop and knitting one sock for Tom out of it. Um, I've got a little bit behind. Um, So this is July's sock. I've still got June and September's sock, no June and August's sock on the needles. Um, I haven't woven the ends in properly on this sock because I seem to have lost. I've lost my little notions pouch. I have a little notions pouch that has like everything in, you know, tape measure, darning needles, scissors, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I lo- and I've lost it. I cannot find it anywhere. And I'm trying to work out where, where I last had it, when I last had it. And um, yeah, I really can't find it anywhere. So I have actually just ordered from Ellie at Craft House Magic. I've ordered a little notions pouch and I've ordered some darning needles from her and I've kind of been scrounging around because I've got plenty of scissors and stuff like that around. Um, So I've been scrounging around for those and trying to find, annoyingly, it had my, I had a little pot full of ring stitch markers. I'm wondering if I've got any I've probably got them on a project somewhere. Um, they're the little ones that I got them from um, Rebecca's Room. Is, she, is her business still called Rebecca's Room? Um, but she does those amazing little kind of um, metal ring stitch markers with the little bead on them. And I love them. They're the perfect size for pretty much every project. And um, yeah, I had my whole tin with all of those pretty much were in there. So apart from whatever's on projects... Um, yeah, they've all disappeared, which is really frustrating. I'm sure it'll show up because I can't have I can't have lost it. It must be in the house somewhere. It must be in the house somewhere, but I can't find it anywhere and I've been looking for weeks. <laughs> um anyway, so that's why I've not woven in at the ends on this because um I couldn't find a darning needle at the time. I have since stolen <laughs> um a little notions kit from um Gem. I've got a whole host of her um little notions kits that she has ready made up the little ones and I've stolen one of those to go in a project bag um and I did pay her for it I sent her money (laughs) I've got them here for Glasgow um she left them with me so that she wouldn't have to ship them up when she comes to vend at Glasgow before that that doesn't make any sense as to why I've got a whole host I'll get them look they're just up here I have a whole bag (laughs) of her little notions kits um so i did steal one of those um so that i had a darning needle but um i've also ordered some slightly smaller darning needles as well because i do prefer i do prefer quite small darning needles to be honest um but yeah i'm rambling all of that to say i finished tom's color of the month sock for july um so i'm getting there it's one little finished project as i said ends still need weaving in um, I've not put these under 
have to stick that sock blocker back. I've not put the other ones in today as works in progress um, because I've not really, I don't think I've really made much progress on them at all. Um, but I do have um, June's colour and August's colour um, cast on. I think June is ready for a heel and August I've still got a bit to go on the leg. Um, but I've got distracted from knitting on those because um, I've been swatching the colours for the new collection, which I will talk about a little bit later on. Right, I also have another finished object. Um, this needs blocking um, and I've not blocked it yet. So, and it's a bit of an interesting one as to how it's come out. So this is the Adama Cowl, which is a pattern by um, Hilary Smith Callis. And it's been on, I, I think I've mentioned before, it's been on my kind of um, list of things to knit for absolutely ages and ages. Um, so it's nice to have finally knit it. Now I picked the yarn, I had this yarn and it's a Malabrigo, Malabrigo worsted. Um, and I've had this yarn for absolutely ages. Ooh, why are you not? Oh, there we go. I've had this yarn for absolutely ages and I had two skeins of it and it is a worsted weight yarn and it is 210 yards for 100 grams and I'd picked this pattern out because it says it's knit with um, a worsted yarn um, and it's again it's a similar it's a similar kind of amount of worsted yarn. It said to use 300 yards of worsted weight yarn and I had what well, each skein of these was 210 yards. So I was expecting to use kind of a skein and a half, um, which is kind of why I picked this pattern. But I finished it with a skein and I wasn't even really playing yarn chicken. I mean, I still had like that much left and I've not even touched the second skein. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping with a bit of really big blocking. So this is it here. I'm hoping with some significant blocking it's going to grow a little bit because at the moment, I'm trying to work out which way around I put it on, I think it's this way around, it's probably not a good idea because I've got clips in my hair, there we go. So at the moment it's kind of that size but when you look at the picture, um, when you look at the picture it kind of gives you the impression that it should be a fair bit bigger and I've not missed out any repeats, I've not done anything differently. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to think, what did I use needle size? I mean, the only thing is I did use the needle size recommended in the pattern and I know I am a tight knitter. So usually I will go up by kind of half a needle size. Um, but with the, with sort of yarn this thick and a lace, I wouldn't have expected it to make that big a difference. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. I think actually with some aggressive blocking, which is my plan, it should grow a bit um but i mean my plan had been to wear it under a coat and actually it's quite cozy i love the colors and um i'm not too worried it's just it's just frustrating when i'd kind of intended to have this use make this pattern to use this yarn because i had two skeins of it and i've still now got an untouched skein <laughs> um yeah i'm thinking i might make like um an not a headband i'm gonna take this off um not a headband, but you know, like you can get like those ear warmer kind of style headband kind of things. I'm thinking I might make something like that. Um, Cause if I've got my hair up in a ponytail, which I quite often do, um, something like that's quite good for winter. Um, and I could have a matching one with the cowl. So I might make something like that with the second skein. Um, but yeah, I need to get this blocked. I keep trying to block it. And then every time I go to block it, my um, washing up bowls that I have for, um, dyeing yarn and I usually block in um, have got yarn soaking in them and I keep not being able to block this so hopefully today I'm not dyeing yarn today so hopefully today I'll get everything rinsed and um, I'll be able to get this into block and kind of block it out quite aggressively I think to give it make it a bit bigger um, but yeah that's that project all finished I am rambling today aren't I I feel like I'm on a, a, a kind of talk fast <laughs> and say too many words kind of podcast today <laughs> um but oh well right 
so that's two finished objects, which is not bad. Do you know, it was quite nice actually knitting the Adama cowl. That was quite a nice quick little finish. And I'd felt like I'd not finished anything in absolutely ages. So to have that kind of quick finish project was quite nice. Um, yeah, I've been feeling a little bit uninspired by a lot of my knitting because I've been knitting so much sample stuff this year. And although I love seeing what my colourways look up and I've been really enjoying knitting up samples of the colour of the month and things like that, um, it's kind of been the majority of my knitting this year and I feel like I've not kind of finished anything other than stuff for the shop. So it was quite nice to get something like that finished. I'm hoping to get a few hats and stuff done over the next few months. Arthur needs some new mittens um, for the winter. I need some new mittens for the winter because Arthur took mine ice skating and lost them or lost one of them. <laughs> um, so there's a few kind of projects like that on the horizon that I kind of need to do which would be nice. Um, right, works in progress. Talking of hats, I've made a little bit of progress on my toasted mallow hat that I'd started um, last, last week. Um, this is a pattern by, actually I'm wondering if I've got a picture, I think I've got a picture. I think I printed the whole thing out, yeah I have. Um, so this is by um, Shannon Larson, it's the toasted mallow hat. Um, and it's just a textured, a textured hat, um, but you hold um, four ply with mohair. Um, and I'd bought these two skeins from um, Kelly at Lay Family Yarn back at the Wool Lay Retreat last year. Um, and they're two of her Squiddle Village skeins. I think the colourway, I'm just seeing if I can get the yarn bands out. Yeah, the colourway is Maggie. Um, and these are the two colours. So they're both in the same colourway. So I've got the um, 75-25 merino nylon four ply and then I'm holding it with a um, mohair silk in exactly the same colourway. Um, and I'm loving how this is knitting up. I'm still on the rib, but it's a double a double brimmed rib. Um, so, so I've just got people walking past my window, <laughs> waving in at me. Um, it's a double brimmed rib. Um, so I've got to knit like four inches of two by two rib. So I think I'm about three inches through the rib. Um, but I'm loving how this is knitting up. I'm not the biggest fan of mohair and I'm sure I've probably said this before. Um, I can't wear mohair in like a jumper or a cowl or a scarf or anything like that but the one place that I can wear mohair and quite like to wear mohair is in a hat especially in winter. Um, up here in Scotland obviously the winters get quite cold um, so I'll wear a hat throughout most of winter um, and I do find like a mohair hat is very very cozy. Um, I think there's just something about the extra kind of fluffiness of the mohair that really helps keep the wind out more. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I'm making progress. I've got about an inch to go and then I'm on to the kind of textured body of the hat, um, which I'm looking forward to. So hopefully that will keep seeing some little progress. Oh, these are the stitch markers I was talking about that I've lost all of them. Um, let's see if I can get that to focus. These little, excuse the state of my fingernails, I've been dyeing clubs all week and I've got really mucky fingers. <laughs> it's just stained, stained fingernails. It's like, the it's not going to focus now, is it? No, you don't want to see anyway. Stained fingernails, the life of a yarn dyer. Um, but yeah, these little stitch markers are the ones. Um, so all of my ones of these have disappeared, which is a shame because I do love them. Um, I shall just have to buy more at some point, won't I? But yeah, that's that one making some slow progress but it's a nice project to just pick up and do a few rounds on and not I don't like I don't have to focus too much on it I don't have to concentrate too much on it which is quite nice then what else have I got on the go so I have started joining my Lord of the Rings blanket um I am not up to date with the crocheted squares I think I've crocheted up let's see one two three four Five, I've got five months crocheted up so far. Um, I need to catch up because I've still got spares that need to go in the shop as well and I've not caught up. <laughs> I've just got behind over the summer with everything. It always happens. Um, oh, interesting. Oh, don't tell me I've done that. I'm going to have to undo one of these. 
yeah that's annoying anyway I've got the first month joined and basically what I'm doing is I'm just doing the join as you go method um Hannah of Corner of Craft has a tutorial for it on her channel and um you can basically just join border it and join it as you go along which is quite handy um so yeah we've got um oh I'm not going to remember all the colors Bilbo I think is that one Gandalf um Feast for Trolls Thorin Oakenshield and the Shire probably for the first ones these were all the Hobbit ones um what I had just noticed annoyingly I don't know if you can see and I can't decide whether I'm going to actually make the effort to undo it or not um let's see if you can tell I don't know if it'll focus um basically what I've managed to do is put this one in the backwards backwards so the wrong side is on the right side and the right side is on the wrong side um so yeah I might have to undo those and redo that one or alternatively ignore it and hope I don't notice and it doesn't annoy me <laughs> um so yeah I'm slowly making progress on that I need to actually dig out my sample basket and get crocheting up all of the others um for those as well um try and get caught up a little bit I'm really behind with those and I'm also really behind with the um with the um Jeremy no the Jeremy Fisher is the one I'm on I'm also really behind with the Beatrix Potter Club that's what I'm trying to say um so yeah it's a bit frustrating but um I need to catch up a little bit don't I really I don't know time it's just time okay um and then the other work in progress that I've added a little bit to not quite as much as I would have liked I don't have oh how annoying um right I'm gonna go get it okay um, the other project is, in fact I need to go black and white, um, <laughs> the other project is my um, advent wrap that I started using the advent that I'm dyeing this year. So this is my um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory advent um, and I've not added a lot to it since you last saw it. I'm on the third colour. I really need, again, I really need to find time to kind of pick this up. If I want to be able to reveal any of the colours in um, December, then I need to kind of get on with it. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with kind of how it's working so far. And this is a great project for it. Um, yeah, that's that one really. I can't show you or tell you much about it. Um, but it is in progress. So that is good. Um, what else is next? New cast-ons. I do have, um, three, four, although actually, again, I'm not sure I've got them all with me. I'm not doing very well, am I, with this? One, two, got two new cast-ons there, three, I'm definitely missing one. I've met, I've knocked the camera, haven't I? I knocked the camera, I think. Let's just... I don't know, I can't remember where it was. Um, <laughs> um, I just need to keep all my whips in the same place. If I kept all my works and progresses and all my projects in one place, then I wouldn't have this issue because they'd always be right next to me. Um, but they aren't, so yeah. Um, four new cast-ons, that's where we were. So first of all, I have cast on um, some Halloween socks, as I said I was going to, for our Halloween make-along, and I have been good. Um, so I shared the colourway on the last episode um, because this is a colourway from Suzanne at Green Lambkin Yarn um, and it is the colourway Jelloween um, which she very kindly gifted to me um, last year. Um, I've just found what's in there. Oh yeah, some little, little stitch markers that I found. I got those this is me desperately hunting for stitch markers <laughs> because I couldn't find use my normal ones um so I've been very good and I did cake this up into two 50 gram balls and I am knitting them concurrently um so I'm a little further ahead on this sock than I am on this sock um but that just means that next time I pick them up to knit on them I'll pick up the one that I'm further behind on um and catch it up a little bit um so I am knitting a pattern um let me let's see so first of all this is the yarn um if my camera will focus I've got I think I've got it set on the wrong setting today which is annoying I should have changed the setting come on camera there 
there we go. Um, so this is the yarn. It is super pretty and I don't know if the sparkle is coming across on the screen but it is really really sparkly. Um, and it's knitting up beautifully. I am knitting the um, A Little Hocus Pocus socks which is a free pattern um, on Ravelry from um, This Handmade Life. I'm not sure whether it's available off Ravelry anywhere. Um, being a free pattern I'm I'm, I'm not sure to be honest um, but it is one of those lovely patterns that just has um, a cable down one side so the rest of it is all um, stocking stitch and it's stocking stitch on the back and then you've just got this cable that goes down um, one side of the sock. Um, the colourway is a little bit is a little bit um, a little bit too busy really for the cable to show up really well but I don't I don't mind that um, it doesn't bother me um, but it is really really pretty and I'm really enjoying it um, it's a really again it's a really easy sock um, really easy pattern to follow and yeah my Halloween socks are in progress so I'm hoping I'm hoping I'll get these finished by the end of October I have got a very very busy kind of month coming up. Um, October I have got, um, I'm vending at Glasgow at the end of October, the last weekend of October. Um, there's two weeks of school holiday in the middle of October and um, one of those weeks me and the boys are actually going away with my parents and I've also got to pack and ship all of the advents and all of the charity advents during October as well and of course keep on top of my normal clubs and all of that kind of thing. So yeah, October is going to be chaotic and stressful and um, yeah, fun. <laughs> so whether these will get finished in time, I do not know, but having them on concurrently does help because it means I don't end up with that second sock syndrome. Um, and I feel like I'm seeing a bit more progress because I don't have, I don't know, there's just something about knitting them concurrently that um, definitely feels better. Um, yeah, I can't quite describe it. Those of you that knit concurrently will know exactly what I mean. Although, like, things grow slower because obviously if I wasn't knitting them concurrently I'd probably be nearly finished a leg. Um, whereas because I am knitting them concurrently I'm not. But I, it's that feeling of knowing that I'm not going to have to knit a second one once these are finished. Um, yeah, that definitely helps. Um, so yeah, Halloween socks are on the go. Um, what else have I cast on? I have also cast on, um, I've cast on a sock blank actually. So this is a sock blank from um, Laura at Athis Yarns. Um, I cast this on over the weekend when I was helping her at Perth, um, well a couple of weekends ago now, um, because I find people always ask questions about sock blanks. A lot of people don't understand how you knit from a sock blank or anything like that. Um, so I said to her, well, why don't I cast one on to have one on the go? And then when people ask that question, we can explain exactly what a sock blank is. Um, so this is the sock blank that I am knitting from. Um, just kind of greys with purples and greens. It's quite Halloween-y actually. Um, it could almost be a Halloween, a Halloween, another pair of Halloween socks. Um, and then this is the progress that I have made. I'm really enjoying how this is knitting up. Um, again, if my camera would focus, why? Well, I must have it on a really weird setting today. There we go. I'm really enjoying how it's knitting up. I love kind of seeing how a sock blank knits up as opposed to, because they always knit up so differently to how they look in the skein. Um, so yeah, that's the sock blank coming along. Um, I didn't cast on a rib because I knew I wasn't going to be able to cast on a rib during a show. Um, so I literally just knit, I just cast it on and started knitting straight. Um, I'm not 100% sure kind of how I'm, what I'm going to do with the top of it, whether I might just kind of let it roll down or, my plan is that they're going to be kind of scrunchy, slouchy socks. The one thing I do find with sock blanks is that I tend to knit them tighter than normal socks. Um, I think something to do with the fact that I'm knitting with the frog yarn, I tend to pull it a bit tighter to kind of take out that kink. Um, so I've cast on 72 stitches for these. So 
depending on whether I do actually knit them tighter or not, there is the potential for these to come out a little bit big. Um, but I'm kind of anticipating that and I'm kind of planning them to be kind of slouchy bed sock kind of things. And if they are too big for me, then it doesn't really matter. Um, the other option, if I was to put an afterthought heel into these, then I could potentially knit them for Tom. Um, if if I haven't knit them so tight because I tend to knit him a 72 stitch sock as well um but yeah so I've cast that on as well I do like knitting from a sock blank and what was quite fun is I just had it round my neck at the show <laughs> and then I was just pulling from it as it was round my neck um and that's actually kind of that's really handy um I'm thinking of dyeing up some sock blanks for Glasgow because um I've got a few in stock from when I dyed them ages and ages and ages ago um, and I'd forgotten how much I enjoy knitting from a sock blank um, so yeah I might dye a few up um what else did I cast on so the other thing I cast on is the new mystery gnome of course um so the new one is called choose your gnome adventure and it has so so many options um you can choose your whatever yarn you want to use um I ended up going with two strands of fingering weight held together um, and you've got a medium size or a large size. So I've gone for the medium size with two strands of fingering weight held together. And I've just finished the body and the hat. And this is where we're at. I was massive. I had to bring the last one with me so that you can compare sizes. <laughs> He's going to be such a big gnome. Um, it just makes me so, so happy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went for the hat. I've got a stripes with a little garter texture bump. And then I went for just a striped body. Um, and I've, the beard, um, the beard clue is already out, but I haven't started the beard yet, but the beard is going to be in this kind of brown colour. And I think I'm going to do the option, there's an option with tassels. So I think I'm going to do the single colour tasseled option for the beard. Um, and then, um, I think the arms and the nose, the clue with the arms and the nose, I have a feeling that comes out today. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, he's, I'm not too far behind with him, I have to say. And considering how big he is, um yeah not too far behind at all I'm quite liking how my hat has kind of gone a little bit skew if um that makes me quite happy I'm, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put the nose yet so technically um I think that's kind of one side so I don't quite know I'm going to kind of get a feel for I like the idea of it having a, having like a, a, a wonky hat you know um, but I can't decide whether to put the face at the front so that the hat's kind of going backwards or whether to put the face at the side so the hat is kind of going sideways. I don't know. But you know my love of gnomes and um, yeah, it's coming along well. He's quite hefty. I actually put um, pebbles <laughs> in the bottom. I did the same with this one. Um, I've never used um, plastic pellets. Usually I use rice um, and I wrap I wrap rice up in cling film and use that as the weighting in the bottom. But when I came to do this one, we didn't have any rice. We'd run out of rice, um, so I couldn't do that. So in the end, I actually just went outside and grabbed a handful of pebbles from the garden and put those in with the stuffing. And it worked quite well. Um, and I've done the same with this one. Um, and actually, he stands up very well. Um, you can just kind of hear the fact it's got pebbles in um but these are these are for display they you know they're not to be squished by the boys they don't they're not kind of cuddly toys as such they're very much ornamental uh, ornamental gnomes oh goodness me not something I ever imagined I would be saying but yeah they are ornamental gnomes um, so yeah it's coming along um and it's ridiculous but they always are um, and then the last thing I've cast on in the last few weeks is um, just a sample, a sample tube of the new Stephen King colourways, um, which actually what I will do is rather than showing this right now, I will share it until shop news. I will save it even until shop news and then I can share the colours alongside their little swatches. Um, but I'm bringing the Stephen King collection to Glasgow. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I had swatches so that people could see how they knit up. I'm going to do crochet swatches as well, but I'd get the knit ones done first and then I will crochet up the squares because they're quicker. Right. 
Is that everything? That's everything. That's all of my knitting stuff, um, basically. But I do, as I said, have some yarny goodness to share. I'm just wondering whether I can reach the yarny goodness. I've got a fair bit, because I mean, it has been a few weeks. The last podcast episode was, um, I recorded it on the 2nd of September. So it's been a good couple of weeks, two, three weeks. Um, so I've had a few bits come in. And then also, obviously, I was at Perth Festival of Yarn helping out Laura. Um, so I did a little bit of shopping there as well. Um, <laughs> because, you know, you have to. Oh, now I've dropped it. Um, so what did I get? So let's start with what I bought at Perth Festival, Perth, I can't talk today, Perth Festival of Yarn. Um, I bought two skeins of yarn from um, Marcus Fiberpunk, um, who does the most amazing self-striping. So I picked up these two skeins of self-striping. Um, this one here is his pop colourway. And I don't know if, again, I don't know if it's gonna come across on the camera, but it is super, super sparkly. And then I also picked up this one here, which is his um, Elphaba's Knickers Halloween colourway. Um, and it's just super pretty. Really, really fun. So they're going to go in my self-striping stash and they will get cast on at some point. To be fair, this one, Halloween one, will probably get saved until next year for Halloween. Um, but yeah, two skeins of yarn. And then I bought a few bags from um, a brand new to me dyer who is Good Vibes Yarn. She had the most gorgeous fibre on her stall as well and she made these little project bags. Um, so I've only got one to show you because I bought one for myself, which is this one here. Um, so they're drawstring bags um, but they've also got little handles. Um, and um, yeah. They're just really nice. I just really liked the fabric. It was really bright and colourful. Um, so I picked up this one for me. And then she also had Pokemon fabric. Um, and I actually bought one for each of the boys out of Pokemon fabric, um, just for them to have to put various bits and pieces in. Um, I'm not quite sure what they've put in them. Uh, Jasper was quite keen on putting his PE kit in them, but I did point out to him that he wears his PE kit to school on PE days. They don't get changed at school. So that wasn't going to work. <laughs> um, but they, they're, they're loving they're loving having them to just carry stuff around in and put cuddly toys in and stuff like that. Um, and then I also bought myself um, some fibre from um, Flora Fibres, who was just opposite us, um, just opposite Laura's stall. And I just kept eyeing up these Rolags and they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, Flora Fibres dyes all, um, so it's all I think it's all natural dyeing. I can't remember if it's natural dyeing or if she just uses natural fibres. Um, but she basically, uh, no, I don't think she's, I don't think it's natural dyeing, but, oh, I'd have to check that. Um, it's all plant fibres that she does. Um, so these are um, Rolags, but they are all mixed plant fibres. So um, she did tell me at the time what's in them, but I can't remember off the top of my head and there's nothing telling me um, what was in them. But I know she said that there was kind of rose and um, there, I think there's rose, tencel, um, there was stuff like banana and pineapple and I can't remember, but yeah, just mixed plant fibres, but they were just so pretty, I couldn't resist. Um, so I picked those up. And that's everything I got at Perth. I did get a mug as well from um, Emily Cross Ceramics, which I bought as a gift for Tom. Um, and he's pretty much drunk his coffee out of it every morning <laughs> since I bought it. So it was obviously a good gift. He's enjoyed that. Um, and then I've got a couple of other bits and pieces. So um, first off, um, Laura Athis Yarns very kindly gifted me this skein of yarn. Um, as a little thank you for, oh, come on camera. I really should just change the mode. Um, as a little thank you for helping her out over the weekend, even if I did end up causing all the drama. Um, <laughs> so um, this is gorgeous. This is on her DK base. Um, this is definitely gonna become a hat or some mittens or something like that. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and then I've had a couple of other things arrive in the post. So first off, me and another Laura, Laura of The Lonely Knitter, did a um, yarn swap ages and ages and ages ago. We talked about doing a yarn swap and um, I sent her a skein of self-striping and the plan had always been that we were going to basically swap self-striping and then 
life got busy, we both got distracted, we both forgot about it. <laughs> She'd had hers for ages. And then she kept saying to me, oh, just tell, when you see one that you like, when you see one that I'm doing, just tell me, just tell me and I'll do it for you. And then I just kept forgetting. And finally, <laughs> <laughs> she's reminded me again and I have gone for um this one here which I think is her most recent self-striping club um and it is her um life is the bubbles under the sea life is the bubbles life in the bubbles maybe that's meant to say under the sea um so it's from her Disney self-striping club that she's been running um isn't it gorgeous really really pretty um so I'm really pleased with that and then um, I also got the most recent month of um, the Chromatic Yarns um, Nitical Roll Yarn Club arrived as well. Um, and that is this colourway here, which is Big Moon, Little Moon, which is a reference to Orem. Um, and it's super pretty. It's not colours I would usually go for. I do love a green, um, but it's not colours that I would usually pick. Um, but oh, I just love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, really, really pleased with that. Um, so yeah, some good little yarny, yarny goodness arrivals this week, which is really, really nice. Um, yeah, there we go. What else? What else do I need to share with you? I don't know. I've lost track. Shop news. We are on to shop news. Okay, so first of all, clubs. The... Um, Beatrix Potter Club and the Middle Earth Minis Club. Um, the next and final quarter of those will be going live on Monday. So that will be, um, you'll be able to pre-order um, October, November, December in one go. That will be live on Monday. I'll also be popping up the individual months because I know there are some people that still want to go for individual months. Um, so again, they'll be going up on Monday as well. Um, and they'll be open for, I'm looking at my thing, until the 10th of October. Um, October's club will be going out a little bit late. I will make sure that there is a note on all the listings. I will make sure there's notes on Instagram um, and everywhere everywhere I can possibly put a note. But yeah, just because I have got so much to do in October and with um, Glasgow and school holidays and everything like that, the October club will be going out in the first week of November. So it will ship by the 4th of November because that gives me, basically that gives me the week after Glasgow um, to get everything packed and out the door. I'm hoping, I'm planning <laughs> um, to get it all dyed up before Glasgow, but I'm just going to leave it. It's not going to get skeined. It's just going to get dyed and hung up to dry. And then once it's dry, it'll get stuck, stuck in a box. <laughs> and then um, once I get back from Glasgow, I'll be able to sit down that week and get it all skeined and packaged and shipped out. Um, so yeah, it won't be going out until the um, first week of November. But November's club will be going out as normal and December's club will be going out early. Um, so I normally aim to get that. I'm looking at the dates, actually. November, December's club will probably ship on the 22nd of December. Um, yeah, probably ship on the 22nd of December so that I can ship it before Christmas um, and it's gone and I don't have to worry about post office closures and being busy over Christmas. So the big thing to talk about is the new yarn collection. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll go into the story of my car after I finish the shop news section. Um, but suffice to say, my car died a dramatic death. And um, as a result, I'd been planning to launch a Stephen King yarn collection at Glasgow um, in person and then on the shop afterwards. Um, but I've put it up for pre-order early um, because um, basically just funding the cost of a new car. Um, I have got a new car now. We were able to scrape together savings and all of that kind of stuff. I basically emptied my tax account, which is going to be a bit of a shock come January um, when I suddenly have to pay tax. Um, and yeah, taken various bits and pieces here and there. And we've added to the loan, the bank loan that we'd taken out when we had the garage converted. Um, and we have got a new car now, which is brilliant. I mean, obviously, unfortunately, the car that died was my big car, which is the one I use for shows. Um, so I needed a replacement that was going to be big enough for shows as well, um, which was, yeah, not cheap. <laughs> but 
Um, to help kind of fund that and refill my tax account, hopefully, um, I did launch the pre-orders for the Stephen King Yarn Club early. Um, so I can show you the colourways. Let me grab one of each colourway down, she says, hopefully. No, that's the same colourway twice. Um, oh, I'm going to throw them on the floor too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So, is that right? Two, four, six, seven. Yeah. So basically what I did, and in fact, if I shuffle this way a little bit while I show you these, I will pop the images up on the screen as well. But basically what I did is I took seven books, um, seven Stephen King books, and I did a bit of research and I found some really fun kind of covers, book covers. And then I've dyed yarn um, inspired by those book covers. Um, so we have got um cell oh, do you know what i'm gonna have to change this this focus setting it's annoying me right hopefully i've changed the focus setting um and it will focus more easily <laughs> should have just done it at the beginning of the podcast but oh well um so this is um cell which is one of my favourite Stephen King books. It's a really fun take on a zombie kind of story. Obviously, Stephen King is horror, and it's not to everyone's taste. Um, but, you, yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, so this is Cell. And again, I will pop up the book, um, the book cover so that you can kind of see the comparison um, with it. Um, and then we also have Misery which is definitely a famous one that I'm sure you will have heard of. Okay, I'm on focus. Why are you being a pain to me today? I don't understand it. You're usually really good. Um, there we go. So this is Misery. And then we also have Carrie. Again, another famous another famous one um there we go and then we have um the stand which is not one i've read but i'm definitely going to be reading it soon um it's a little bit <laughs> a little bit um appropriate after the last few years because it kind of follows the world after a um a sort of influenza pandemic wipes out most of the population of the world um but I love this one. This one's really pretty. And then we also have Cujo. Um, and this is one I have not yet actually sampled. I've not written knit up the sample for this one. But I'm really excited and interested to see how this one knits up. Um, but yeah, that one's Cujo. Then we have The Shining, which is a little bit different for me in terms of the style of dyeing. Um, because it's much more variegated than a lot of my colourways are. Um, but I love how this knits up. You get like a proper spiral of the kind of rainbow colours. It's like a mostly green background with like a spiral of the rainbow colours. Um, so it's really, really pretty. And then finally, this is my favourite colourway of the collection. We have it. Oh, come on, camera. Focus in the right place for me. There we go. Finally, we have it, which I just love this one. It's gorgeous. There we go. Um, so as I said, I've done swatches, which I've now lost because the whole collection I've just put everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to throw yarn around my office and regret it later when I have to tidy up. Um, so I have swatched, I think I'm nearly there. I'm on the sixth colourway. So Cujo, I haven't swatched yet, so I can't share that one with you. Um, but we have got, so let's see if I can get this to focus in the right place. We've got Carrie. Then we've got um, The Shining. And as you can see, I just love how that um, spirals, how you get the spirals with the um, with those colours. Then we have It. Then we have Misery. Then we have The Stand. And then we have Cell. And as I said, I'm in the process of doing Cell. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so Cujo is the one um, that I haven't... Yeah, there we go. That's it all caked up. Um, Cujo is the one that I haven't... Oh, this is really annoying me. 
there we go Cujo is the one that I haven't um, actually started the swatch for yet um, but yeah so the pre-orders are open at the moment and they're going to remain open until the 30th of September um, and then I will get all the yarn dyed up and it will ship out at the end of October so basically I'm aiming for it to ship out um, the 31st probably the 31st something the week of the 31st so that possibly that first week of November um, after Glasgow if you're coming to Glasgow um, then let me know and I'll happily refund your shipping and you can pick it up from me at Glasgow in person um, but yeah that's the new Stephen King collection it's also available as mini bundles with the seven mini skeins in um, I don't have them to hand but they look like the colorways <laughs> um, so yeah if you want minis they are available as well so that is that one right I am going to finish up with a little car disaster story and then um, that'll be it basically thank you for sticking around this far um, yeah so car disaster story um, yeah my car died a fiery death basically <laughs> um, I my car was old so it was 2008 um, it had done over 100,000 miles, it was a petrol car, so 100,000 miles on a petrol car is, is quite a lot. Um, and um, as you'll know if you followed me for a while, I did break down on the way back from Sheffield in um, June. Um, luckily not as dramatically, um, but yeah, I mean, and we got that repaired, um, but it's just, it's just got to that stage where it started costing us more money than it's kind of worth anyway. Um, but yeah we were driving back after setting up so we went to Perth no problem at all set up the car uh, set up Laura's stand um, and then we were driving home because we were staying back in Dundee um, on the Friday night and we got about halfway home and I suddenly got out of the blue there were no other warning signs no other kind of warning signals coming up on my car or anything I suddenly got an alert that came up that said engine oil pressure warning stop <laughs> um and you know like how you get alerts that come up but you kind of you can ignore them for a little bit you know it's nothing urgent and then you get the ones that say stop this was one that said stop so I pulled over literally as quickly as I could um I missed a bus stop which I could have pulled over in and then I ended up pulling over in the entrance to a field um and we got out the car we phoned I phoned my husband I phoned the RAC um engine was off hazard lights were on that was kind of it um I had the keys um and luckily we got out the car and we stayed out of the car and um yeah about 15 minutes after ringing the RAC just black smoke suddenly started billowing from the under the bonnet and there was just a whoosh of flames and um yeah it slowly well not even slowly really from that point it just went up it just went up um we obviously as soon as the fire started we phoned 999 um and got a kind of police and fire engine and stuff like that on the way um, they took ages they took a good 25 minutes to get to us by the time they got to us yeah there was no saving that car um, and I think that was the scariest bit really was just being there just standing there and being completely kind of what do we do we were on the wrong side of the car so we couldn't stop traffic <laughs> we couldn't get past the car to stop traffic um, because we were kind of down 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 the road from it um, and the number of people that were still driving past it as kind of things like the wheels started to explode and stuff like that was scary. Um, eventually, some very sensible people stopped kind of before the car and just blocked the road. They just stopped and stopped very sensibly. Um, but yeah, the number of people that came past. Um, we did have some lovely people that stopped um, that kind of early on when the fire had started before it had got too dramatic they they came past and they stopped and they pulled over and a number of other people had actually phoned the police um as well and um yeah they then eventually um a british transport police vehicle going the other way came along and they stopped um and they weren't 
the call like we they weren't the police that we'd called or anyone else had called they just happened to come and see it um, and they were very nice they were really good and they kind of chased up where everybody was and the call and eventually fire um, fire brigade arrived an ambulance arrived because I think some people were worried that there was people in the car um luckily obviously there wasn't we were fine um but yeah it was all very dramatic and we had to deal with the, the police were brilliant um and I mean I didn't even really deal with the firemen at all much they just came over asked a couple of questions about the car and then just got on with it um and then eventually the police um drove us home they got special permission um they got special permission to drive us home which was quite funny so the initial like, the police that had come out with the call were an armed response unit so they weren't able to drive us home they didn't have seats they didn't have anything in the car to drive us home so we're so lucky that the transport police had stopped because they had seats that we were able to go in there they had like they were in a van um and um they got special permission and they were able to drive us home so yeah we got i got driven home in the back of a police van which was um exciting i'm sure there was lots of gossip from the neighbors when i turned up in the back of a police van um but yeah that's kind of it i mean we were so lucky on a number of reasons i i just can't quite i can't quite get past how lucky we were with the way it happened i mean the fact that it was me and laura and not me and the kids um the fact that the car was pretty much empty i mean what was in it my sack truck was in it 25 quid from b&q you know not a big deal um and <laughs> unfortunately ellen um mrs lamb's yarns she had given me her charity advent minis um so they were in it unfortunately but um she's very kindly re-dyed them for me um but that was it. You know, we both got our bags out of the car without any issues. It wasn't full of stock. It wasn't, you know, we were close to home. Um, we were only coming back from Perth. Um, it's not like I was suddenly stuck in the middle of England somewhere, miles away from home. Um, and just even the fact that, like, I'd pulled over in the entrance to a field and not in a petrol station or you know, somewhere where there were other cars or other people or things like that, you know, that just terrifies me. I mean, if it had happened, if it had happened on the way to Perth and I'd parked where I parked underneath the Dewar Centre in the multi-storey car park, I dread to think, like, it, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. Um, but we were very, very lucky, very fortunate. No one was hurt. Um, yeah, we've obviously put in a claim for the, into the insurance, but to be honest, um, we, we got like 1,500 quid. The car was old. It wasn't worth a lot. There was nothing of value in it. Um, so yeah, not a lot really. It's not gonna get us, not gonna get us a new car, is it? <laughs> um, so, um, but you know, they've been very good. I mean, it just shows you how actually little things that like having the insurance made like we got a letter the other day from the police about like collecting our car from where it had been towed to um and like the cost of like it's like 350 quid or something for the fact that they've had to clear it from the side of the road and then 25 pounds a day for every day they hold it in the lot and i had a moment's panic where i said to tom have we got to pay this you know is this it's like getting getting on to near on 600 pounds are we gonna have to pay this and they were like he, he rang the insurance people and they were like no as soon as we made the claim on whatever day it was as soon as we as soon as the accident which wasn't even an accident as soon as it happened basically the insurance company took um ownership of the car um so we just had to send them the details and they were the ones responsible for it and that was all covered by the insurance so yeah just little things like that that just show kind of how important how important the insurance is um so yeah but a dramatic start to the weekend it was definitely a talking point for the weekend um yeah and I'm just so grateful that it happened the way it happened and wasn't a lot worse basically um yeah so there we go dramatic car story um if you want to see photos um they are on my Instagram there are some photo there is a photo I think um on the initial Stephen King post on my Instagram um so feel free to kind of have a little look over there and you can kind of see photos of my car up in flames um but yeah it was it was definitely an experience I don't want to repeat <laughs> um yeah anyway 
on that note, I will say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching this week's episode and um, hopefully I will be able to keep up with a two week schedule. Um, and I'd love to keep recording a few little vlogs. I quite enjoyed doing my one the other day with the self striping. Um, so I'd love to be able to kind of fit those in, but I'm very conscious that October is gonna be chaotic for me. Um, but I will see, I will do the best I can. Um, but yeah, thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye.